So the connection here, um, sometimes the impression that we, we've given um, over the years is that this is a white man's club. Now you only have to look at the colour of my skin and today I'm seeing that there are a number of people here um, that are not of Anglo-Saxon heritage and um, anyway. The Queen stands as an in enduring person on, from an enduring throne and it, it comes back to the Bible. The nation of Great Britain is inextricably linked to the Word of God and um, it's what brought England and Scotland out of the Dark Ages. The Word of God civilised um, our nation. Unfortunately, it didn't civilise every man. And I want us to be conscious of the fact that when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he spoke about men that rose up uh, against the word, and against the Father. And he said, you stoned the prophets and um, you killed those that had his word. And even though they bore the name of God, they weren't for the Lord. And he said he was able, even of these stones, to raise up sons, servants of Abraham. The Queen, however, is a role model. She is often described as a servant. And we're all to be servants. Let's have a look um, at the first slide here. I'll just come back to that one. And in Matthew 20 it says, And when the ten heard it, now there was a dispute over who would be the greatest. And I guess they might have been a bit embarrassed when the Lord sort of came over and knew what they were thinking. And they may have tried to hide it from him, but they weren't going to get away with that. They were moved with indignation against the two that were trying to be top dog. But Jesus called them unto him and he said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. Exousia, great authority. The Amplified Version talks about it as tyrannising. That's the sense of it. But it shall not be so with you. If we have any regard for the Word of God, any respect for the Word of God as leaders, we will not tyrannise. Jesus said, I am meek and lowly. So we talk about in-service meekness, but Jesus who created the earth, who created the angels, was meek. It talks about how Moses was meekest of all men. So if you want to be great, you need to be a servant of all. It says here, But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Now this is the word of God. This is what was supposed to be the aspiration of all the subjects of this. And as men reject this, we do so at our own peril because it keeps us in check. You want to be good, a good leader, you be a servant. Now it says there, minister. The word minister, to minister to someone, is to serve them. You see? And that's where we get our satisfaction, isn't it? When we see the things that we, we set ourselves to do, and they come to pass. And it may not benefit us, but we, we, we watch. It's like when our children get married. Or when they do better than us. We don't get jealous about those things. It's our delight to see that our, our um, children and our grandchildren would prosper. It's not about us, is it? And whoso will be chief among you, let him be the servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to serve and not only to serve but he gave his life whipped, beaten and scourged and then crucified an innocent man he that hath the bride John, John the Baptist said is the bridegroom but the friend of the bridegroom who standeth and heareth him rejoices greatly because the bridegroom's voice this my joy therefore is fulfilled. What John was saying was he had a life but his goal was to have 
people call to the Lord, that would become the bride. And then he would see the bridegroom unite. And that was his joy. Not that he was elevated into some high position, but that he saw the accomplishment. Many prophets, it tells us, many in the Old Testament have desired to see the things that you and I see, but never got to see those things. And today we are the beneficiaries. And it says, John said, he must increase, but I must decrease. This is all about the end goal, isn't it? The prosperity of people. The accomplishment. Are we going to be part of the solution or part of the problem? Being part of the solution, we may not get any kudos for that. But it doesn't matter, does it? And, you know, the Queen stood at times uh, the ridicule of the press, although they weren't game enough to do that, but certainly the royal family. And sometimes, unfortunately, uh, you know, they were dogged for, for good reason. But anyway, Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And some translations say condemns a people and we're condemned to repeat failures if we don't use a standard that causes us to rise to a greater calling. The Bible tells us that he that is born into honour and understandeth it not is as the beast that perisheth. We're not called to be beasts. We're called to understand what we can contribute uh, uh, to, to our, our um, journey through this life to make the place much better. You know, and to pursue peace. Now, I want to talk about various nations that are part of the Commonwealth and the tributes that have come uh, from the people that are there. Okay, there's some of the flags. The symbolism is rich. The Union Jack, the rampant lion, all of these things feature. The unicorn, I'm not going to go into those things. Uh, I'll get distracted, so I'll keep moving. Canada's first in you, uh, Governor-General Mary Simon, uh, released a statement reminiscing about the Queen's relations with the Inuit people. Uh, when I was growing up, my grandmother revered the Queen. My grandmother. As did many of the um, Arctic. She would tell us stories about Her Majesty, about her role and her commitment. Now, many of us today stand in, in, at a time in history which is it's so great. It's the best time in history, really, isn't it? But it, I don't think it could have been that bad when the grandmother's talking about her reverence for the Queen. Her reign accomplished the mandates of 12 Canadian Prime Ministers and talks about a longevity there. On behalf of all Canadians, I offer deepest condolences to the members of the royal family who grieve the loss and the loving... Uh, mother, grandmother and grand, great grandmother. I'll just play a little few videos. I have a collection of um, videos that we can look at and I'll just, should I stop Ten, that? A symbol of the relationship yeah. between the Crown and Indigenous people. Leaders of today are now reflecting on her legacy. You know, I, I find that even through turbulent times, you know, it's like she never, she was always the same. She was always her balanced self. The 96-year-old died Thursday as the longest reigning monarch and is being remembered fondly by Assembly of First Nations Regional Chief Cindy Woodhouse, who wore a treaty medal in the wake of the Queen's death. Uh, over those many, many, many years, like what a remarkable woman um, to be able to reign so long and to and to you know she made a commitment in the beginning that she would do that and and she lived and she lived that through sentiments that were echoed by Manitoba Métis Federation President David Chartrand when you look at it uh, 
It's the way she carried herself, the way she carried herself in the public. Chief Clarence Easter of Chimawawan Cree Nation in northern Manitoba remembers gathering around the TV when Queen Elizabeth II visited the province. What stood out to me was I think she was a people person. She was always out and about, always smiling, always waving, all, you know, those kinds of things, and always saying good words to people. For 70 years, the Queen served as Canada's head of state, and it was the Crown which originally signed treaties with First Nations, marking the beginning of a sacred, long-standing relationship. I'll just move uh, through some of those. Reg we'll come to Australia. Vincent uh, Amadure, and I come from Sydney, and um, there are many um, buildings and places named after Vincent, and it tells us how that um, the British royal family is for the reasons why I made so many paintings of the Queen and the royal family, he said, connections between my family and history. Now, um, sorry, Albert Amadure is the grandfather of Vincent's is his grandson. Um, <clears throat> personally, I'd like to see, and I guess he could say this because he is Indigenous, Indigenous leaders as heroes past and present have the same level of recognition and respect that the royal family does. And you know what? I'd like to see that too. You know, And I have many friends and I've never seen them any different. I know that there are people that do, but why not just celebrate our friendships, yeah? I don't understand it sometimes. I just, I, it's a little bit beyond my comprehension. I'd like to. I think we all would. But the Queen did, or she endeavoured to. And it says here the, printers, um, the painter said that he, he might retire from the, um, painting the Queen and instead turn his attention to the new King Charles. Well, I hope that happens too. Um, Northern Territories Minister uh, Chancy French recalls how he heard some stories in his youth about the Queen's visit to Alice Springs in 1963. It was the highlight of the town. And I can still remember uh, the enamel plates that hung on my grandmother's dining room wall in the house. In East Side, he wrote, every year we'd stay up late to watch the Queen's Christmas message and my grandmother would never hear a bad word said about the Queen. In fact, while the Queen was speaking, we weren't allowed to say a word. And some of us can remember that, you know, children were to be seen sometimes and not heard. But, you know, it hasn't changed that lot much because if Dad was watching the football, he didn't want to talk during the game either. And I have a little bit of a, um, a, a, an interest for the ladies as well as the men later on when um, uh, we go through it. So there's a little bit of football there and there's a little bit of cake making. So one for the boys and one for the girls. Uh, we see here, um, Lingari, I apologise if I get these names uh, wrong, um, Sig Sigmore, Simgor, I should say, posted a brief message on her Facebook page reading, Her Majesty was the most dedicated of leaders, a source of comfort to us all. And Senator Jacinta Price thanked the Queen, saying, may you rest in peace. Um, we see Colin Barnett and Robert Isaacs there with the Queen and uh, she's gone over to a school in Western Australia which caters to Aboriginal children and here's a little bit of that. <laughs> Yeah. 
and uh, he did his job well. It was there was quite a um, a lot of theatric in that uh, dance. It was uh, very convincing. And uh, just Cinder Price there, um, special relationship with Her Majesty, the royal family, with the Aboriginal Australians. Price said, "I know many revered and held special place in their hearts for her." This was evident in the excitement of those who attended my great, uh, in great numbers to view her on her visits to Australia. Now, Mark Eller, I started watching some of these and it took me back to a time, a really good time, um, with some very good names in the game of rugby union. And uh, what I'll do is Cutler, brilliantly won. Eller, just show you a little bit about... Mark Eller takes it up. Line up. Oh, man, take it out of the play. Matthew Burke. Capizzi! Capizzi! Markella! What a try! And I'll, I'll stop it there because he was on one side of the field. I don't even know how he got over the other side of the field, but he took that ball from Campisi and across the try he went. Um, a great time in, in, in the history there. Warren Mundine um, posted on his Facebook there, sad news, rest in peace. Um, in news greeted profound sorrow across the Commonwealth, the monarch has been pronounced dead after several months of concern about a deteriorating health. I'll just we had to be this. on point, there wasn't, you know, can we have a cup of tea and see the dogs and smell the roses? We were there to do business. So we get in there and we're totally disarmed. T totally disarmed. Uh, the Queen, she was... <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a funny thing to feel a bit emotional about it because she uh, she's so welcoming and she uh, she thanked us for coming and um, she uh, I think for the first excuse me. I think for the first time in our lives, we were treated properly as, uh, uh, she treated us as human beings. Africa. TV screens in Africa interrupted their regular programming Thursday nights to announce the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Longest serving monarch has died. Queen Elizabeth died peacefully at her Scottish estate where she had spent much of the summer according to Buckingham Palace. Tributes immediately began to pour from around the world and in Africa where the impact of her reign has left an indelible mark. Nigeria ruled by the British Empire from the mid 19th century until 1960 is one of them. I felt so sad when I heard about her passing but I also celebrate her life uh, as a symbol of leadership, you know, peace. And I remember that she gave us our independence and the plot of gold, and that I'm grateful about. Emotions were also stirred in South Africa, where the Queen's ties to the country began in her youth. The mayor of Cape Town paid tributes to her long life of dedicated service. Of course, we remember that the Queen had a special relationship with Cape Town. It was here in 1947 that she celebrated her 21st birthday and made what is probably remembered as one of her most, if not her most famous and well-remembered speeches. Here in Fajara, Banjul, Gambia's capital, one woman chooses to celebrate the Queen's long reign. Gambia had been a member of the Commonwealth from 1965 to 2013 before reapplying for membership in 2017. This is something that people should not be sad about because she spent most of her years, you know, doing great things for people. And for me, I think this is a great, a great, you know, win for everybody, every woman, especially. For this once in Freetown, Sierra Leone, part of the British Empire from 1808 to 1961, the world has lost an icon. The Queen has set example for the rest of the world. I mean, when she visited um, Sierra Leone in the 1960s, in the aftermath of our independence, I was not born, but I was taught in history that her visits turn the corner for the history of Sierra Leone. As we say in Arabic, may her soul rest in perfect peace. On behalf of Sierra Leone, 
We are sending our deepest condolences. Queen Elizabeth II's tenure spanned notably the transition from empire to commonwealth. Okay, so the point I guess I could make is that these tributes just keep going um, and we see many, many people. Um, I won't go, oh, yeah, I won't go through that. Um, from Papua New Guinea, who actually made the Queen their monarch. They requested it. They actually wanted her and, so, and she took it up. It was an invitation. And so she became the head of state of Papua New Guinea by request. Do that. This is um, uh, Papua New Guinea, and it goes through there. More on Papua New Guinea, and of course the Fiji connection. Um, uh, there's some good stuff here. I'll make it available. This is available on on um, YouTube or something, so you can actually see it. And um, I'm going to take one little bit. I'll, I'll leave the presentation there because I've gone over time, which I knew would happen. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll just sing a song, which is. Um, it's uh, only a very quick one, so I don't know if I can go backwards. Can I go backwards? And then I'll hand over to whoever it is that I'm handing over to next. Karen, do you know who that is? It's Karen. So I'll just go back to the song, and hopefully you can hear a few of us sing it once or twice, and you can sing along with us. We get some air into our lungs. There it is. Um, let's give that one a go. Did ask permission. Yes, sir. 